Simeon Duchamp stared out of his bedroom window at the Phoenix Clinic, a private rehabilitation clinic overlooking Lake Zurich and the snow-capped Swiss Alps, where he was receiving treatment for alcohol, drug, and internet addictions. Sim was addicted to sex, too, but he would rather die than admit to that and spend his life trying to abstain from cock. It was a glorious spring morning. The sky was a sharp arctic blue. Thickets of trees on the perimeter of the vast wooded lakeside grounds swayed in the gentle breeze. A group of six patients were completing their early morning yoga class on the main lawn, bending and bowing with their final leonin stretches. Simeon watched the group do their sun salutations, downward dogs and child poses, secretly wishing he were with them and that he could stay cocooned and pampered at the clinic forever. Simeon's world had shattered two years ago when he fell in love with his fellow model and best friend, Peter Bayer. Peter never returned the same level of affection and had, in fact, fallen for someone else. On discovering that Peter was in a relationship with painter Emily Raven, Simeon couldn't cope with what he saw as rejection. In spite and jealousy, while under the influence of a mixture of substances, Sim decided it would be fitting revenge to leak false information about Peter to a fashion gossip website. The information was shared and commented on by millions of followers. The fallout from that sorry exercise was nearly disastrous for Peter's career. Clients falsely believed he was walking away from his contractual obligations and he was deemed unreliable and unprofessional. However, after Simeon's exposure as the source of fake information, his career began to falter. Clients refused to work with him, friends dropped him like he was on fire, and the backlash became intolerable. Simeon disappeared, and when his father's investigators eventually found him at a hotel in Geneva, he was trying to kill himself with a cocktail of vodka and pills. The intervention by his father, Patrice, and subsequent treatment at the Phoenix Clinic saved Simeon's life. After three months as a patient at the clinic, Simeon's hedonistic, outrageous model facade dissolved, along with the drugs and alcohol that were purged from his system. Beneath his camp party boy mask, there was a quieter, more introspective, sensitive young man, a man who felt everything too keenly, loved too deeply, and could not cope with the pain of loss and rejection. Sober for the first time since his late teens, Simeon was as fragile as a fledgling and bewildered by the colours, scents and sounds of the big, wide world. Who was Simeon Duchamp without his mask, without the crutches of alcohol and drugs giving him the confidence to get through each day? A gentle knock on the bedroom door startled Simeon from his introspection. He looked away from the window, toward the door to see his favourite young male nurse, Carl, poke his head inside. Your last session with Dr. Schroeder is in twenty minutes, he informed. One for the road? Carl's brows waggled provocatively. Simeon's lips slid into a salacious smile. Lock the door, he directed, swiftly moving to the bed. Carl stepped into the room and, as instructed, he locked the door. Simeon began by removing his T-shirt and then unbuttoning and sliding out of his jeans. Carl kicked his soft-soled white croc clogs off and discarded the lightweight nurse's uniform of white trousers and tunic shirt in seconds. Simeon stood, his eyes appraising the slender, boyish form of the twenty-eight-year-old nurse. Carl had offered a pleasing aside from the trauma of therapy. He was Simeon's type, blonde, blue-eyed, eager to please, and deliciously well hung. Carl approached and pulled Simeon into a deep, messy kiss. At six foot, Simeon was taller than Carl's five foot six, but what Carl lacked in height, he certainly made up for with his cock. Simeon longed to devour all ten inches one last time before leaving the clinic. He ran his fingers through short-cropped blonde hair, his hard unbrushing urgently against Carl's. He then dragged the naked nurse to lie prone on the hospital bed. Carl chuckled throatily. Simeon clambered onto the bed, and his long willowy legs straddled his conquest, so they were in the sixty-nine position, the head of his erection directed at Carl's willing mouth. Sim took the man's thickened, stout, uncut cock in hand and stroked, retracting the sheath of gossamer foreskin over the engorged head, marvelling that Mother Nature had seen fit to bestow a monster cock on such a slight man.